This is Brother Will, aka Quiet Storm, and I'm coming uh, at you today. Just want to scratch the surface on the topic of spiritual erosion. Now, if you Google the word erosion, you're going to see images of like rocks and solid things that have now become warped or out of balance simply because there was a force, normally water, that's been repeatedly uh, moving against them or repeatedly coming against them. Um, and you, what you see is that over time they become worn down, they become damaged, um, and, and they seem like the most solid things in the world. But due to this process of erosion, which, which takes place over time, it's not an immediate uh, process, you see that they become worn down. So, so basically, if I just give you a simple definition of the word erosion itself, it's basically uh, something that has been worn down or something in which an outside force has continually moved against it and caused damage or caused parts of it to be out of place, right? And so that's what happens to us spiritually at times if we don't take the right precaution. Um, so if you look at those images, you're going to see like the natural example of erosion. But what I want to do today is just sort of tie that in and uh, show you how that also works in the spirit realm and how you can become spiritually eroded if you don't use the proper tools, the proper spiritual tools and weapons that God gives. All right, um, and so we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. And I'm going to just sort of paraphrase it. It tells us to be steadfast, unmovable, and always abounding in the work of the Lord. In other words, that's one way he's telling us to be aware of, uh, beware of spiritual erosions and don't let anything deter you from moving forward in the things of God and moving away from your faith in the things that you believe in. All right? So when I hear uh, things like that, the first question that comes to my mind is, well, okay, now you're telling me don't let anything um, deter me or let me stray from the faith. So how is, that, how is it that I do that? Well, that scripture in the, the second half of it, it, it gives you the answer in part. All right, what it says, basically, it says, steadfast, be steadfast, unmovable. And that last part says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So that's what's going to keep you. Uh, you got things like going to church. You got prayer. You got fasting. You just got speaking the word of God. Uh, you have fellowship with other believers. Uh, take your time to pray. You know, read his word, different things like that. That's how you're going to always be abounding in the work of the Lord, and that's how you can sort of um, protect yourself from the erosion process because the enemy is going to keep bringing things at you. It may not be big things that just hit you with this big blow. I mean, he may just come with these, you know, these little light taps, and you're thinking those little taps are not really affecting you, but before you know it, you know, it keeps tapping, and you moved over here when you were right here centered anchored in the word, anchored in prayer, anchored in all these things, but these little forces came and just like slowly sort of knock you off path. Um, so, and that's sort of like how the enemy does. So we have to realize that we are in like a spiritual warfare and we have a worthy adversary. We have a worthy appoint, opponent, which is the devil. And uh, he's not a dummy, you know what I'm saying? The devil is probably smarter than, you know, all of us. You know, the Bible tells us that you know, he gave him the sum of wisdom. So he's uh, like a wise creature. So when it comes to, you know, spiritual warfare and things like that, you got to have the Holy Spirit leading you and guiding you. And you got to use every tool. Well, it would be wise to use every tool um, and weapon that God has equipped us with for this fight. Uh, another verse, Proverbs 4 and 23. And I'm going to just run through these stuff real fast. Um, it tells you to guard your heart. Um, now, one version says that guard your heart because everything you do flows from the heart. So it's like reversing the effect of the spiritual erosion when it's coming against you. Just like that water was coming against those mountains and those rocks, it was flowing against it. It was flowing against it and causing it to sort of move. 
we use that and we flip it. So when we, we let the word of God flow through us, when we let prayer and speaking the word and let positive things flow from our heart, it's the reverse effect. Because now when we do that, we're going against the enemy and his kingdom. We are, we are eroding his position. We are eroding his stance in our lives instead of allowing him to come in and erode us. So we flow against him when we do that. Um, so like I said, remember this is a, a spiritual warfare. Yes, we're blessed. You know, God loves us and he wants to see us to have the best. But at the same time, we still have to remember that, you know, we are soldiers in the army of the Lord. And this is a warfare, a spiritual war. So we have to keep that in mind, too. Um, another way to erode his kingdom, basically constantly speaking the word, um, being, being instant in preaching the gospel and witnessing. You know, so speak the word uh, in season and out of season, no matter when. You have to be ready to uh, speak the word of God to your situation. Uh, pray without ceasing. Continue to give God praise. All of these things can sort of defend you uh, against the spiritual erosion in the way that the enemy is going to attempt to be coming against you. Um, and like I said, that's just more so I just wanted to scratch the surface, surface on that topic. I may do something a little later on, a little more in-depth. Uh, break it down like more scriptures and things like that. But like I just wanted to get something just to, to have you thinking about it. 